Are you looking to control your ingress and egress traffic based on geographic location? Well, if so, stick around because AWS Network Firewall now supports it, and I'm gonna show you how it works and how easy it is to set up. I'm Brandon Carroll, and in all my years in network and cloud security, I've come to appreciate the importance of being able to control traffic based on multiple factors. Sometimes filtering on port and protocol is exactly what you need, but at other times, being able to go deeper in the application layer is the right approach. Maybe going so far as to use TLS inspection to uh, decrypt, inspect, and then re-encrypt the packets. However, there are times when stepping back and being a bit more broad is exactly what you need. And that's where geographic IP filtering comes into the picture. With geographic IP filtering and the AWS network firewall, you can filter traffic destined to or sourced from specific geographic locations. For example, perhaps for compliance reasons, you need to ensure that servers in Europe do not communicate with servers outside of Europe. With geographic IP filtering, you can do this. It's quick and it's easy to set up. But before we do that, let's cover a few points to help you understand how this feature works when you enable it on your network firewall. Now, before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more technical content just like this. Okay, so first off, if you'd like to use the geographic IP filtering feature, you can do this in either standard rule groups in network firewall or with Suricata rules. When you configure the rule, you have the option to filter on source or destination or both. Now, I'll show you this in a standard rule group first, and then we'll do it in a Suricata rule. And when we do it in a Suricata rule, we can use these keywords for the source or destination options, and then the GOIP keyword to specify the direction. You can see that here in the Suricata documentation. I'm on the Suricata website, and you can see I have the source option, the destination option. I can use any or I could use both. And so there's other options here, but this is where you'll find the syntax. Now, I also wanna mention as we begin to configure this that it works for IPv4 as well as with IP version six. Okay, so that's cool. Now, how exactly is the geographic location gonna be determined? Well, for this, Suricata uses the MaxMind GeoIP database. Uh, so let's jump out there real quick. And here we are on the MaxMind website at maxmind.com. And let's just do a quick demo here to show you how this works. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna enter an IP address. And so let me just go ahead and put in an address of one of my EC2 instances that's in Germany. So let's view the results. And very shortly, we can see that that address is in fact in Frankfurt, Germany. Okay, so that's cool. That's how Network Firewall determines the geographic location. Now, when we configure our rules, if you notice this in the Suricata documentation, there's a two digit value. The two digit value, those characters, those alpha characters, define the country. Okay, so the two digit value for us here is gonna be DE. You can actually see that right here on the MaxMind website. But let me show you how you can look up uh, these country codes. So to do that, let's head on over to iso.org OBP. You can see I'm on that website now. We're gonna select country codes and then in our search field, we're gonna enter the country. And I'm gonna type in Germany here and hit search. And this is gonna come back with our country codes. Now remember, this is the alpha two code. This is the two character code that we want, not the alpha three. So the alpha two code for Germany is DE. And if you're in the US, it would be US and so on. Okay, but you can look those up here. And you can also see these in the AWS console, and you'll see that as we get into the demo. 
Now that you have some of the basics down, let's talk about the architecture for our demo. As you can see on the screen here, we have in the center, US West 1, and that's where AWS Network Firewall is deployed with our firewall endpoint in our firewall subnet and a protected subnet that houses a workload. On the left-hand side, we have US East 1. In a public subnet, we have an Nginx server that we can use to test connectivity. And on the right-hand side, we have EU Central 1, and that's where we also have a public subnet with Nginx running on our server there, and we'll test connectivity to that one. And again, that's in Frankfurt, and the other one is in the US, and we'll test between the two. Now, with our initial configuration, we should be able to reach out to both the server in US East and in EU Central. So once we verify our reachability, then we can build our firewall policy to use geographic IP filtering and prevent the connection from the US West 1 workload to EU Central 1, while still allowing connectivity to US East 1. Sound good? All right, let's walk through it. Okay, so now that we're in the AWS console, what I wanna point out here is that we are looking at our network firewall that's deployed in US West 1. And when I come down here, I can see I have a firewall policy called demo firewall policy associated with it. And that firewall policy has a stateful rule group and a stateless rule group. And they pretty much allow anything right now. So to test, let's come over here to systems manager. This is our EC2 instance that's deployed in US West 1, sitting behind our firewall subnet. It's in the protected subnet. This traffic is gonna pass through the firewall endpoint on its way to wherever we try to go to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl the Nginx server in US East first, and then we'll do the one that's in Frankfurt. So let's go ahead and first uh, here, I'll just type in the curl command for our server in US East 1, and that is successful. Thank you for using Nginx, okay. And then let's go ahead and curl our server that's in US, or I'm sorry, in EU Central. And that works as well. Thank you for using Nginx. Okay, so we could just clear that for now. So we have a fresh slate when we come back to test our policy. All right, let's go back over here to our firewall and let's go ahead and create our standard rule group. So we're gonna create the rule group first and then we're gonna apply that to a policy and then we'll attach the policy to the firewall. That's the order that we're gonna work and this is gonna be a standard rule group. So I'm going to go in here to network firewall rule groups. I'm gonna click on create rule group. This is a stateful rule group and our format is standard stateful rule. We'll leave the rest alone and click on next. And then under here, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the details. So I need to give it a name, standard G-O-R-G. -G. We'll give it a description and a capacity. We'll go ahead and hit enter here. Now, as we configure the rules on this page, I'm not gonna do any rule variables, so I'll just get rid of that or collapse that. IP set references, we're not gonna worry about that right now. We are gonna come here to our standard stateful rules. Okay, for our standard stateful rules, here's what we need to do. We need to match only on selected countries. And we're gonna say the destination is gonna be DE. Remember we know that alpha two code, right? Okay, so there we go. We have our country. Now let's go ahead and set our protocol and let's make it uh, all IP traffic from any to any source destination we'll leave alone and we're gonna drop this traffic and we'll add that. Then let's create another rule. Let's do the same thing. Let's match only on selected countries and we'll leave this at any and we'll just say United States here. There we go, US. And we're gonna choose our protocol. We'll say all IP traffic, and we're gonna pass that. So we'll add that rule. Okay. So if the destination is Frankfurt, it's a drop. If the source or destination is US, it's a pass. So we'll hit next. 
We're gonna leave the advanced settings alone. We're not gonna do a customer managed key. We're not gonna add tags. And we'll create rule group. And this will just take a moment. And now we've got our standard geo RG. Now let's go ahead and configure our policy. So we click on firewall policies. We're gonna create a firewall policy. Now again here we need to, uh, as we set our policy, we need to give it a name and a description. And so let me go ahead and just type that in. We're gonna call this standard geo policy. We'll give it a, a description and we're going to leave the stream exception policy at its default values, click on next. We're gonna leave the stateless default actions alone and scroll down, let's add our stateless rule group. So there it is, that's already created. We can use that one again. Come down here to our stateful rule evaluation order. This is strict order, so the rules are processed in the order that they're defined, starting with the first rule, that's what we want. And so we need to add that stateful rule group that we just created, standard G-O-R-G. Click on add, click on next. We're not gonna do any advanced settings here, so we'll click on next. We're not gonna configure TLS inspection. However, there is another video that you can go watch where I show you how to set that up for both ingress and egress TLS inspection, but we're gonna leave that alone right now. We're not gonna add any tags, and then we will click on review and create and create firewall policy. Okay, so now that we have the firewall policy created for our standard uh, rule group, we need to apply this to the firewall. So let's click back to firewalls. Let's go into our firewall again. We're gonna come on down here to our firewall policy, click on edit, and let's change it to standard geo policy and click save changes. Okay, so now, we just wanna make sure here that everything is in sync, which it appears to be, and now we test. So let's go back into Systems Manager, and remember how we did this before? We're gonna start out, we're gonna curl US East, and this should be successful because it's not going to Frankfurt, and now let's curl the machine that's in Frankfurt, the EC2 instance in Frankfurt. And nothing. This is exactly what I would expect to have happen. Uh, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It noticed that we're going to DE, Frankfurt. That is denied, that's dropped, and now we're dropping those packets. Okay, excellent. So I'm just gonna control C to stop that. And uh, let's also, while we're here, take a look at our log files and let's see if we can see what's happening. So I have CloudWatch enabled and if I come down here, let's just refresh this. I have some log streams, let's go into this log stream and let's see what this event is. Here we go, this is, this is that attempt out to Frankfurt and we can see it's been blocked. So exactly what I expect to happen. So we have our logs, we have our standard policy, everything's working as expected. Let's go back over here to our instance and let's put our demo policy back on. So we're just gonna go to, not our instance, we're gonna go into our firewall that is. And right here, our firewall policy, let's just change that back to demo, save changes. We'll see just how quickly this happens. Okay, so we want everything to be in sync, which it is. And then let's clear this page and let's try US East again. That's good still. And let's try Frankfurt. And it's good again. Okay, so we're back to wide open. Now let's go ahead and create our Suricata rule group. So let's come on over here to our firewall. We're gonna first, again, create the rule group. So network firewall rule groups. We're gonna create a rule group. This is a stateful rule group, only this time we're gonna say Suricata compatible rule string. Click on next. And now we need to enter our details 
for the Suricata rule. And so let me go ahead and enter the values for that. So we'll call it Suricata G-O-R-G. This is a geo rule and capacity of 10. Hit enter. Again, we skip the variables and the IP set references. And here we actually have to enter the Suricata rules. So we're gonna create a drop rule and a pass rule. So let's go ahead and start out by creating the drop rule. And you'll notice the syntax like we talked about. We're gonna block outbound traffic to Germany. So there's GOIP is the keyword, DST, the destination is DE. Okay, so that looks good. And then we'll just hit enter. And then let's go ahead and enter our pass rule. And this is gonna be to pass IP any any to allow all that other traffic for the US. So again, we use that GOIP keyword and I just want to take this space out of here. Okay. So again, pass IP any any, and then GOIP colon DST comma US semicolon, and then our SID and our revision number. Okay, so that's how we build the Suricata rule. Let's click on next. We're gonna leave these advanced settings alone. We're not gonna add tags. And we're gonna scroll down and create the rule group. Okay, so now we have our Suricata G-O-R-G. Okay, so that's good. And now we need to create the policy that we'll attach this to. So let's go back over here, firewall policies. Let's create a firewall policy. And this firewall policy, let's go ahead and call it Suricata Geo Policy. All right. And go to the next page. Select our stateless rule group, like we did before. Leave the stateful rule evaluation the same. And then attach that new Suricata G-O-R-G that we created as our stateful rule group. Click on next, leave the advanced settings alone. We're not setting up TLS inspection again. We're not adding tags. Scroll down to the bottom and create your firewall policy. Now, if you recall, our next step is to apply this to the firewall. So we go back into our firewall we go down to our firewall policy, we click on edit, and we select our Suricata Geo policy, click on save. All right, now at this point, what's our next step? You probably guessed it, right? Let's go back and curl. So go back to systems manager, and let's start out with our US East, should still work, because we're allowing that traffic to the US. That is good. And now let's try Frankfurt. And again, the firewall is doing exactly what we expect it to do. So we'll just leave that. Let's come back up here over to our CloudWatch logs. And let's go back here to our log groups. Make sure we're on, let's just refresh this. We're on our latest log stream. And let's see, still blocking. All right, looks great. Everything works as expected. Uh, we could leave this policy on or we could do a little bit of cleanup and we could put the demo firewall policy back on either way. But that is how we configure and verify our geographic IP filtering capability in AWS Network Firewall. Well, there you have it. You've seen how we can apply a firewall policy with geographic IP filtering enabled to control traffic to or from specific geographic locations. For more information and for helpful resources on geographic IP filtering, check out the links below. If you enjoyed this video, and it was useful to you, be sure to hit that like button and you'll also want to subscribe to our channel for more technical videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.